today on the YY family, you know how kangaroos have pouches? Well, I'm gonna find out why. Then my dad's gonna take me inside a microwave oven so that I can see how it zaps my food. Mom tells me all about yucky fungus, and then we go looking for mushrooms. Uncle Micro and Uncle Scopo show me how the heart is like a pump that pushes blood throughout my body. And later, Grandpa and Zygo take me to check out the moon's craters. Wow, now this is gonna be way cool. Come along with me and meet the smartest family in all the town. The Wild Wild Family. Mom can make it plain to see that what goes up eventually comes down. The Wild Wild Family. Come and meet the Wild Wild Family. We got a lot of real know how. Grandpa knows a lot of the farming. Ask him and I'll show you now. Why do we play fly? When I land, I'll tell you why. Wondering what's the matter? Every person hears a cry. Rushes to the baby side. What's the deal? What could it be? Just on the Wild Wild Family. Hey, the questions that you have are not too serious. The animals and plants are not so mysterious. So have no fear. Everything will be made clear. The little quick and quiet part here. He's enjoying the ride in his mom's pouch. Yeah. Hey, Mom, why do kangaroos have a pouch? Why don't we take a trip to Australia where kangaroos live and see if we can find out? Whoa, that would be great. Um, what's in Australia? It's a continent. Here. I see them, Mom. Real kangaroos. Kangaroos belong to a group of mammals called marsupials, which carry their young in pouches. Baby kangaroos, like all mammals, develop inside their mother's bodies. Here's a kangaroo embryo in its mother's womb, where it receives nourishment until it's ready to be born. A human baby spends nine months developing, but a baby kangaroo is born after only one month. It's not fully formed. In fact, it's not much bigger than your thumbnail. It finishes developing in its mother's pouch. I think this one is about to give birth. If we're careful, we can get a closer look. Well, that should be a pretty good disguise, especially if the kangaroo is nearsighted. When a baby kangaroo is born, its mother licks her fur to guide the baby to the pouch. I can see it. There it is. Doesn't it look much like a kangaroo? That's because it's not fully grown yet. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? What are you doing? I'm cheering it on. Luckily for it, it can't hear you. Its ears haven't formed yet. It's deaf and blind. Stop bickering, you two. You'll scare our new friends here. Mom, I think it's made it into the pouch. Yes, it has. And it's attached itself to its mother's nipple. It'll spend the next four months feeding through the nipple. Then it'll be fully developed and ready to peek outside the pouch. And then? After another two months, it'll begin to feed on leaves. By the time a baby kangaroo is six months old, it starts leaving its mother's pouch and learns to jump. <laughs> I think it needs a little more practice. Hmm, something smells like a drugstore. Mm, this is a eucalyptus. Its leaves are used to make all sorts of medicines. And when you see a eucalyptus in Australia, you can be sure there's a koala nearby. He looks like a teddy bear. Yes, but the koala is a marsupial, just like the kangaroo. So it carries its baby in a pouch too? Yes, it does. What about me? I'm a wombat. I've got a pouch too. My little sister's in there. And what about us opossums? You can't leave us out. Especially since we're the only marsupials with relatives in America. She's right. Except for opossums, marsupials are only found in Australia. How come? Because in Australia, until very recently, there weren't any other animals to hunt them or to take their food. And now, how would you like to play baby kangaroo? You bet! Hold on! <laughs> How does it do this? How does it do that? Max is the one with the electric.
electronic knack. Machines are his thing, so don't go berserk. That's on the job. You'll find out how they work. Be patient, Victor. Dinner will be ready in half an hour. But, Mom, I can't wait a half an hour. You say you want food fast, but you don't want fast food. Well, my little friend, I've got just the thing. The one and only handy-dandy microwave oven. In just 15 minutes, you'll be able to eat this entire chicken if your stomach's big enough. Just watch out for the bones. <laughs> That's great, Dad. But how come the microwave cooks faster than Mom's pokey old oven? Pokey? Let's start with the basics. Do you know what waves are? Sure. When I throw a stone in a pond, it makes rings in the water. Very good. The stone produces circular waves that you can see. But there are other kinds of waves you can't see, like microwaves. Microwaves are a type of electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves. Good. There are several different types of electromagnetic waves. They include light waves, Radio waves, which also carry TV signals, and X-rays. Now this is your basic electric oven. It works on a very simple principle. The electricity warms up the heating coil, which warms up the inside of the oven. For the next step, we'll need special equipment. It's going to be hot. These suits will protect us. The key to this is water. All of the food we eat contains water. And water is made up of tiny elements called molecules. The heat in the oven causes the water molecules to move. When molecules move, they produce heat. The faster they move, the more heat they produce. This heat cooks the meat slowly, starting with the outside. Now let's check out the microwave oven. This is the magnetron, which generates the microwaves that cook the food. What's that? We'll see in a minute. By the way, kids, microwave ovens are only for cooking food. Don't ever put a living thing inside one. But it's okay for us, because we're cartoons. Right, Dad? Right, Victor. Now here's what it would look like if you could see the microwaves moving in slow motion. The microwaves are reflected off the blades of this spinning fan and scattered in all directions. They bounce off the oven's metal walls, pass through the plate, and into the food. Microwaves can pass through glass, plastic, or cardboard, but not metal. Is that why Mom says it's dangerous to put metal things in a microwave oven? That's right. Now, when the microwaves enter the food, they cause the water molecules to move incredibly fast, billions of times a second. Faster molecules make more heat more quickly, right? You got it. And now, you've got dinner, too. When the molecules speed up, they make heat. That's very interesting, Victor. But if you don't eat your dinner, it's going to get cold. Okay, Mom. My chicken! The salt! <sighs> Isn't science delicious? Control. Where's the sauce? Sauce? Oh, uh, sauce. <laughs> uh, you know, it's around here somewhere. Well, here's a tomato, but it's all fuzzy. That's mold, oh, Victor. What's mold? Mold is made up of lots of tiny fungi. They don't look like fun guys to me. <laughs> Not fun guys, fungi. Or if there's only one, fungus. A fungus is a kind of plant that has no chlorophyll. Oh, yeah. You taught me about that. Chlorophyll helps plants make food. Right. And since fungi don't have any chlorophyll, they get their food from things that are rotten. I got kids on the squishy pie. Yeah, that's disgusting. Actually, outdoors, fungi are very useful. They sort of clean up after other living things. But inside, yuck, that is disgusting. Can we go outside and see some fungi? 
Let's wash our hands first. Well, actually, I see some fungi right here. There's nothing here but mushrooms. That's right. Mushrooms are fungi. They're great on pizza. Quack, no. Those mushrooms are poisonous. You should never, ever eat a mushroom you find growing in the wild. A poisonous mushroom is very dangerous. They're kind of pretty for something that feeds on rotten stuff. And what you see is only part of the mushroom. Most of it is underground. The mushroom is made up of a whole bunch of tangled threads called mycelium. Uh, let me tell you, it's not an easy gig. Hey, look at me, I'm all tied up in knots. <laughs> it looks like it's wearing a hat. That's the cap. That's how it makes more mushrooms. Look, Victor, can you see the gills under the cap? They hold millions of little specks called spores. Then they drop them and the wind scatters them. And when they find conditions that will support them, they grow into mushrooms. Mom, come and see. What's going on? They're looking for truffles. It's a delicious sort of edible mushroom that grows underground. If they're underground, how do you find them? The dog can smell them. Look, it's found something. I know it's something to eat. Hey, you can't do that to him. Only I can do that to him. Hey, over here, Rover. Black remembered that boars love truffles. In fact, they're sometimes used to find truffles. Oh, that was a lucky break. Black, where are you? Are you all right? Look what I found! Whoa! Is that a mushroom? Yep, that's a giant puffball. They can grow as large as six feet in diameter. Oh, there you all are! I was... <laughs> Alien invaders! They landed! I, uh, I guess some people aren't cut out for the wonders of nature. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't hang upside down like that. Oh, Mom. All the blood was rushing to your head. Hey, Mom, what's blood for? First of all, Victor, you have to understand that blood travels to all parts of our bodies. It's just like traffic moving all over the city. Only instead of running through streets and alleys, it runs through the veins and the arteries of our body, circulating everywhere from our head to our toes. An adult human body contains about a gallon and a half of blood. Let's go see blood circulate. Oh. Over there are the heart and the lungs. When you breathe, the air flows into your lungs. And the blood carries the oxygen from your lungs all over your body. It's the heart's job to pump the blood all around the body. And the blood's red cells carry oxygen and nutrients from the food we eat. Blood is also made up of white blood cells and plasma. It's the liquid that the red and white blood cells float in. I know a way to make this easier to understand. Remember the traffic on the road? The heart works like a pump. I have a pump. Well, your heart pushes blood all through your body. After it travels through your body, blood comes back to the heart and is pumped to the lungs, where the red blood cells pick up more oxygen, then go back to the heart and are sent around your body again over and over your whole life long. Whoa. Show me. Traffic on a highway, blood is carried away from the heart through the arteries and capillaries. Then, when the blood delivers its oxygen, it goes back to the heart through the vein. Now we'll see how the body uses the things it gets from the red blood cells. Ah, just the thing. This muscle is working hard. It needs extra oxygen and nutrients. Scopo, you handle the oxygen and I'll take care of the nutrients.
tea. Now it has plenty of oxygen and glucose. The nutrients found in sugar delivered courtesy of the red blood cell. What's this garbage? Well, the activity of the cells in our bodies produces waste. The red blood cells take care of that too. They carry away the waste so our body can get rid of it. Ow! What is that? It's a microbe! The white blood cells will take care of this. It's their job to rid the body of microbes that can cause disease. Get your gummy hands off me, you lousy coppers! You can't do this to me! No. Thank you, Uncle Micro. I'll remember everything I've learned today about red and white blood cells. While you're at it, Dad, do you think you could remember where we parked our car? What did Wait, you do? Wait, not my dog. No, 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 Your parents left me in charge, and it's your bedtime. Are you trying to get me in trouble? <coughs> Zygo, knock it off! You're acting like a dog! <laughs> I am a dog! You're also a YY! Yeah, but with a moon that bright, a dog's just gotta howl. Uh, say, Grandpa, where does the moon come from? You know, from? Victor, it's very late, and, and that would make for a good bedtime story. Actually, nobody knows for sure how the moon was formed. But scientists have come up with a few possible explanations. The first possibility is that the moon and Earth formed separately and very far apart from each other. Then, billions of years ago, as it happened to pass near our planet, the moon was captured by the Earth's gravity. Oh, I'm so bored. Hey, company! You, come here! Leave me alone, you big bully! Hmm, yeah, of course it's only one of the theories. What are the others? Well, when the solar system first formed almost five billion years ago, there may have been a ring of particles turning around the Earth. Like Saturn's rings? Yes, Victor. And like Saturn's rings, they would have been made up of ice, dust, and rock. In time, these little bits and pieces may have come together and formed the moon. But there's yet another possibility. Oh? What's that? Another planet may have crashed into the Earth. When it hit, the explosion would have thrown debris into orbit around the Earth. Kids, don't try this at home. In fact, don't try it, period. We think this debris could have come together and formed the moon. But even though we can't be certain how the moon formed, we do know a lot about what it's like now. We've even sent astronauts to the moon to explore it and to collect rock and soil samples. Do we know where all those holes came from? Those aren't holes, Victor. They're craters. They were made when meteorites crashed into the moon. Incoming! Meteorites have hit the Earth, too. But our planet is protected by its atmosphere. Well, you taught me most meteorites burn up before they hit the Earth. Right, but the moon has no atmosphere to protect it. So meteorites hit it with tremendous force leaving huge craters. Uh, well, I think I understand, Zygo. Oh. <laughs> Looks like Victor's had enough theory for one evening. Well, Victor, what'd you learn today? Oh, tons of neat stuff. 
Australia's a really cool place where kangaroos and koalas hang out. And I learned that Mom's pokey old oven can't cook food nearly as fast as the new microwave that Dad bought. I also learned about different kinds of mushrooms like giant puffballs, which are really big and kind of scary. Oh, what is that? It's a microbe! Then I found out that white blood cells protect me from microbes giving me a disease. And I learned that the moon is really a satellite that may have been formed from rocks and debris that was floating around the Earth. Sounds like a pretty big day. It was.